Hey guys, Jerick and Komodo here, and hey, we haven't done one of these in a very long time. Actually, you probably don't even remember the last time you did a voiceover for one of these. Vaguely. Anyway, Trials Fusion just came out last week on PC. It came out on the 24th on PC, a little bit later of a release date on PC than console. It came out on the 16th for console, but it's only like less than a week difference. Not really that big of a deal, so it's totally worth the wait. It's not Dark Souls 2. <laughs> that was worth the wait too, though. Oh my god, don't even get me started. Anyway, we're talking about Trials here. Let's let's try not to uh, go into a rant about Dark Souls 2. So, of course, the map editor is back in Trials Fusion, and from what I have seen, it's even better than it previously was in Trials Evolution, which is kind of hard to fathom, because you saw all the crazy shit that people were able to do in Trials Evolution. I, uh... Oh, set. oh no, holy crap, you made it. I am kind of waiting for like that one map that you're just going to be like, what the hell is this? Well, this is still pretty early on in Trials. Um, I've already seen some interesting stuff, but I don't think people have fully figured out the map editor quite yet. So it's going to be, I don't know, possibly a month or so before we really start seeing this crazy stuff like we were seeing towards the end of Trials Evolution, where it was like a random third-person shooter and stuff like that and yeah he has to die in horrible ways in the end of every level <laughs> oh for some God, reason. That was beautiful. But yeah, so far I'm very impressed with Trials Fusion. I've mentioned this before and um, I'm going to go ahead and add in I'm gonna start making I don't know maybe one of these videos a week maybe one every other week just there's no set date just whenever I feel like making them but I'll definitely be making more of these I do really like the Trials franchise um, and with Trials Fusion there's gonna be a lot of new content to make videos of so be expecting a lot more of these. I started the episode count over, but I'm going to continue adding them into the same playlist, and I changed the playlist name from Best Trials Evolution Maps to just Best Trials Maps. Better organization. So, I've also noticed in the, um, the track central, which is kind of the area you download tracks and find everything, which seems to be actually a little bit faster than it was previously, but they seem to have organized it a little bit differently. I don't quite know yet if it's going to solve the issues we had. Oh, and I gotta talk about this level. So this is literally all this level is. And for this level, I became a uh, Stairs Dragon. <laughs> I don't know if I just got... <laughs> I don't know if I just got, like, really lucky here, or if you set it so that it was a little bit more difficult for your character to crash. But I just tumbled down the whole way and did it on the first try, and it's like, alright, this is amusing enough, why not go ahead and add it in. I'm sorry, but this instantly makes me think Saints Row 4 when you're doing the insurance fraud. <laughs> <laughs> just cartwheeling through the streets of the city. A little bit. Um, and I got a platinum for this. Like, that's the highest medal you can get, so I don't know. I don't know if I just got really lucky or what. It was amusing enough to add in, especially once I finally hit the ground, which at first, I mean, he did a pretty good job making it look like lava, but it's really just tinted uh, dirt. And in the ground. <laughs> Summon the ground dragon. That's um, beautiful. <laughs> but as I was saying earlier, I don't know if the new track central is going to solve the problems we had later on. And also there's a different rating system. It's not five stars. It's just like or dislike, uh, which might contribute to some of the changes that go onto the track central. See, later on in Trials Evolution, it was really hard to find levels that I actually liked because all the levels you found were ninja difficulty levels. Now, everything here seems to be categorized by like different difficulties. It's much easier to find ones that are medium difficulty. They even have brand new, like a new playlist for easy maps, medium maps, hard maps, and extreme. So it seems to be organized better, but still it's been too short for me to say that the problem has been fixed, so I don't know yet. But I am not a fan of ninja difficulty levels. I'm really not. <laughs> Um, it's it's kind of annoying when you're trying to find good cool maps like this one like what you're seeing right here Which is a pretty good looking map Just uh, visually at least the layout itself is It was interesting nothing really fantastic. He added in these cool launch pads but, You know I want to find levels like this and it's kind of difficult when all you find is ninja difficulty levels And the only reason those showed up so much is because when it comes to trials You can't vote on a level unless you have beaten it and when it comes to a ninja difficulty level, you're probably not going to have the patience to beat a level that you hate just to say, fuck this level. <laughs> so, yeah, hopefully it'll solve it. I don't know if it will or won't. That reminds me of those Halo kill ball things. There's a lot of stuff like this. Like, from what I have seen, there has been a ton added into the track editor, which, like I said earlier, is hard to fathom as is because the Trials Evolution track editor was already pretty ridiculous with some of the stuff you could do. Uh, I'm still waiting for all the crazy the crazy stuff that we saw later in Trials of Evolution. Like I said, the third-person shooters that would show up out of nowhere. The random first-person horror things. Like, this is supposed to be a motorcycle game. 
<laughs> like, where are these showing up? I've never actually seen one, so I can't even, like, work out in my head how that would work. I actually made an episode specifically for horror maps in Trials Evolution. There was that many of them being made. It was, it's really... I mean, this is basically the dev going, Hey, we're gonna go ahead and give you guys mod tools within the game. Because that's essentially what the track editor is. And I don't think I can think of anything off the top of my head that's this in-depth. I mean, sure, you have things like Forge, but it's nothing as in-depth as this is. I get I agree. Although, I, I do love Forge, though. I mean, if you're gonna at least limit Halo to only PC, I mean, the least you can do is give us Forge. Yeah. I would love to see Halo on PC. I would, too, but, uh... Also, I, you know, it's cool that they add in those different camera angles, but dear God, does it mess you up when you're trying to go through the air and keep your balance. And okay. yeah, you know, I hear people arguing about that all the time, like, should Halo get on PC? And people will always bring up the fact that it's like, well, Bungie and 343 would have made so much more money if it was on PC. Yeah, but that's not the point. Microsoft owns the IP, and they would be making so much less money on the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One if Halo was also on PC. I mean, look at Titanfall. Look at how much that's being sold in the Xbox One compared to PC. I haven't looked at the numbers, so I don't know. Well, in general right now, there's a few things contributing to this, but PC gaming is bigger than console gaming, regardless of what people think it is. There's more users actively online, Steam is massive now. And money, like, there's nothing really saying my PC is making more. But from the figures that you're pulling in from, like, free-to-play games and everything away from Valve alone, I think I can pretty much say PC is pulling in more money, but the thing is, no one really knows because Valve does not release how much Steam actually makes. They keep that really private. But the whole point of it is, PC gaming is really successful right now for numerous reasons. One, it just always has been. I don't know where these people are coming from saying PC gaming is dead, it never has been. Oh, and I gotta talk Whoa, about what? this map. So Did your head come off? No, that's the ball. Oh. So there's a skill game uh, category in Trials Fusion now where it's just a bunch of skill games like this that people can make. And the whole point of this is to pretty much just get the ball in the goal. You know, huh. I added in some failures, added in some, uh, sometimes I got pretty close to this is me getting a little bit closer to figuring out how to do what I need to do. As I was saying though, PC gaming is not dead. And it won't be dead for a very long time, if ever. And as of right now, PC gaming is a, getting a big leg up because we're kind of in between console generations. And not a whole lot of people own an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4 in comparison to the previous generation. And I honestly think PC gaming is getting a huge boost as of right now because this console generation is nowhere near as powerful as, say, the 360 or the PlayStation 3 was on their launches. And they really, let's just be honest here, they cannot compete with PC gaming or even come close this time around. And to make things even worse, before optimization meant something. Because the way the 360 and the PlayStation 3 and the PS2 was and all the previous console generations, the way they were built, were really, really weird. I mean, for example, Take the PlayStation 3. The CPU on that thing is like nothing you'll ever see. So op optimization meant something. You had to figure out how to work with the CPU. Oh, and I didn't get the ball in, but I landed in this time. <laughs> Does that count? <laughs> Apparently not. But yeah, they had to figure out how to code for the PS3. So optimization meant something, but this time around, all of these different new consoles are literally just PC hardware. And Oh, gotta tease it in. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Only got a silver medal, but whatever it counts. But yeah, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, same exact hardware we have in PC gaming. It uses shared memory, basically using mobile GPUs. So when it comes to op optimization nowadays, it doesn't mean writing a better code for this really weird processor. It means, well, the game can't handle what we're trying to throw at it. I guess we gotta, or the console can't handle what we're trying to throw at it in this game, so I guess we gotta scale the game back. So when you say that my console is better because of optimization, you're basically saying my console is better because it isn't powerful enough to handle new games. And it's like, I know people are gonna get really mad at me for saying that, but I'm sorry, it's true right now. Like, if you're contemplating getting into gaming at this point in time, or if you're contemplating saying getting a PS4 or Xbox One, I would really recommend just getting into PC gaming, like right now is the time to do that. The hardware will cost you about the same on PC as it will Xbox One and PS4. You can build one for the same exact price or buy a pre-built for the same price, if not a little bit more and save a lot of money over time. And trust me, this is not me just trying to shit on console gaming or anything like that. This is me trying to help you have a better gaming experience, like I'm not trying to shit on anyone, so don't try to take this offensively. Because people immediately take as an attack like, oh you wasted your money, you totally spent 
You know what I'm trying to say. They, they take no, it as a personal attack. Like they need to justify their purchase, and that's not what I'm trying to do here. Yeah, I completely understand that, and I don't know. There's not really a whole lot you can say that's gonna make what explosions because why not? Okay, <laughs> and then the words fall over. That's fine. But Physics. Yeah. <laughs> People will take that as an attack because they essentially think you're, you know, insulting them by insulting their You're choice. basically calling them a stupid consumer, pretty yes. much, which is not what I'm trying to do. Trust me, I'm not trying to insult anyone. You guys are the people that are technically paying me by giving me views. So I want you to stay around a little bit. And you know what? I gotta agree with you. I mean, I personally, for the longest time, I thought consoles were the only way to go. I knew nothing about PC gaming. I'm gonna interrupt you really quick. So this skill game, it's very simple. Basically, I'm sorry, selfie simulator. <laughs> I already hate it. <laughs> I clicked on it because of that name. It's really exactly what it says. You press a button to freeze time. You can change the day. You can change the camera or change the change the day. You can change the time of day. Mess with the camera. And I kind of tweaked with this a lot because I was honestly trying to get the thumbnail for the video here. So there you go. I paused it, and that was me holding back without realizing what it actually did yet. So yeah, you can move the camera in any different direction. So I guess Selfie Simulator is a accurate title of this. That and is kind of hilarious. It's actually kind of cool, in a way. Like, all the things you can do in this game. This is really simple stuff. I mean, imagine what's going to happen in the, in the next few months when people really figure out the track editor. And, um... See, this is me trying to get good screenshots in. That was me messing with the Omnid Occlusion. Um, basically doing a lot of things so I could get a good thumbnail for the video. So that's what I wanted to do. A anyway, continue on with whatever you were saying. Well, now I have to remember what I was saying. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I, back then, I didn't know, you know, anything about PC gaming. Except for, like, you know, you installed the game and you played it. And that was, like, that got me through, you know, games like, say, Quake 2. I enjoyed that way back when. Diablo, I enjoyed those. But those did, they, those took nothing out of your computer. And then I started playing, like, really, uh, I, I can't really say hardware intensive because it really means nothing compared to now, but I played something like, uh, and you're probably going to hate me for this, I played EverQuest on a really, really, like, it was a business laptop, and it ran poorly, and I had no idea why. And a lot of people, I don't know, they just don't understand that you can get a good computer, you can run any game that's out there, if as, as good as, if not better than a console can, and... You don't have to pay nearly as much. I mean, you don't have to pay for controllers. Well, okay, you do have to pay for controllers for some games on the You PC. have the option to use said controllers. Exactly. So that's the next thing. You have all the options in the world to do whatever you want to. Controller, keyboard, and mouse. I mean, if you're more comfortable with one or the other, granted, I would never condone uh, using a controller for something like Battlefield 4 because you'll just get destroyed. Um, oh, and this is me trying to figure out, can I, like, end this and give it a thumbs up so I can, like, rate it or something? I couldn't figure out how to actually end it, so I ended up actually just exiting out of the course. And, the, and getting my back tire stuck in the ground, so... <laughs> it's like, okay, well, whatever, it's cool track, so you guys can you guys can see the name and everything. You notice before I actually go to the go to the track, I hover over it and give you the name and what it's called and all that stuff. Keep in mind, I'm playing this on PC, so I don't think this is interchangeable between PC and console. I think the tracks that are only on PC are only on PC, and, you know, not vice versa. I'm not sure. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I'm merely assuming. I'm just going to say this now. I'm waiting for that day where there's going to be, like, cross-platform play. Uh, I'll talk about that in a moment. This skill game, um, I chose the ATV because I know this skill game, you know, I kind of got it figured out by the name of it. It was Ball Balance or something like that. Literally, it's as easy as it looks. That's all you got to do. But it's not that easy because these things don't back up that quickly. So once you get over that pivotal center of balance a little bit more forward... See, like, right here, I can't do anything to stop me from <laughs> falling forward because it can't back up that quickly. I thought it would be easier with the ATV. I was way wrong and switched the bike and did much better. I didn't know you could reverse on a bike. Magic. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cross-platform gaming, though, they tried it, um, and they ultimately canceled it. And the honest reason, and there's a lot of different articles about this, so don't be getting mad at me for it, what they were trying to do it with were shooters, and when you're comparing someone using a keyboard and a mouse to a controller, that's a really, really bad comparison, and the console gamers were getting absolutely just destroyed when it comes to aiming. 
Because when it comes to a shooter, a mouse is... And I don't care if people are going to try to tell me this is opinion or not, because it's clearly not opinion. A mouse is better for aiming than an analog stick. Yeah. And there's I mean, proof in that to where... do What do we need on PC gaming? We have no aim assist. You need aim assist when it comes to a controller. It's very difficult to hit someone without it. And if you're trying to play Battlefield 4 with a controller without aim assist, good luck. Now... I was going to kind of touch on that a little bit. I remember all these games, that I, these first-person shooters that I had played because, you know, you yelled at me to play them. <laughs> hey, I like shooters. What can I say? <laughs> and then I went back and I played Call of Duty, and I felt like I was moving in slow motion. Yeah, that's the other thing when it comes to it. This is actually a really common misconception when it comes to aiming on pretty much everything. There's this idea that, like, a higher... Say a higher sensitivity number on consoles where, you know you look around faster with the analog sticks or just raising your DPI with your mouse on PC gaming. This is common misconception, oh, a higher DPI is better or a higher sensitivity is better. Sure, now you can do those, you know, twitch shots with someone behind you, but now you can't aim worth shit. Now you can't actually track people. You may every once in a while get that lucky twitch shot, but you can't actually accurately hit people so it overall hinders you. Okay, this skill- What nonsense is this? <laughs> yeah, you're looking at this like it's crazy. This skill game, literally, you hold the right trigger down, this is all that happens. I love this in because this is a good example as to people kind of figuring out the track editor and getting set sequences in using different vehicles that aren't actually officially in the game. So I thought Nitronic Rush kind of got crushed in there somehow. I am I am really waiting the the sequel to Nitronic Rush. I really am. I can't remember the name of it. I actually have it. It's Distance. Distance. I actually have it backed. So you know, every once in a while, a new, they'll release a new like track a new audio track for the music and whatnot i'm like hell yes <laughs> because i honestly am almost more excited for the music than i am for the game because the music in Electronic rush was awesome we need more uh i can't even remember what it's called i think it's electronic house i believe that's what it was that doesn't seem like something you'd listen to in my, in my opinion hey, i listen but... to everything people know that i love metal but i listen to a lot more than just metal yeah which is why i was confused when i came home one day and you were listening to pendulum eh drum and bass is okay. Which reminds me of the music in this game. So this is the last course. I just wanted to go back to our regular trials course with the very last uh, last track in this video. The music in this game. If anyone knows where I can get the soundtrack, point me to where I can get it, whether I have to pay for it or not, because I would actually love the soundtrack of this game. The best way I have to describe it is like a mixture of a very heavy influence with drum and bass, and then like Payday 2 mixed with Time Splitters 2 soundtrack. It's interesting. And it's really good. You can probably hear it in the video behind us talking. I mean, we're talking over it, so you're not going to fully hear it. But if you've played it, you know what I mean. It's actually really good music, and it we, it works even better with this. Uh, because, you know, a lot of the time it's, like, fast-paced, and you're like, Oh shit, I almost crashed. <laughs> so, it's cool. And they also did these kind of, uh, these editing things with the game, where it's like, you have certain sections of the level. Like, with Payday 2, the music kicks up when the battle starts, stuff like that. So they kind of worked something like that in with this game. More the games music. need to do that. They do. It's really good audio uh, audio editing when it comes to this. Anyway, this has been the last track. Like I said, I'm going to try to do one of these maybe once a week, once every other week, whenever I kind of feel like it. But it should be often uploading new episodes of Best Trials Fusion Maps. So, hope you guys have enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next video.